Hey, hello, another great day the Lord has made. And let's give this one the number 194. Today we read 2 Kings 15 and 16, Psalm 130, and our first reading in John 14. May the Lord bless you real good today. Let's open to 2 Kings 15. In yesterday's reading on the Israel, ten tribes, side, we heard of Jehoahaz's reign. He was helped by Elijah in his final prophecy. Then the names started getting confusing as we heard of Jehoahaz's son, Jehoash. Also in yesterday's reading, we heard of Amaziah's reign in Judah, and it's confusing again because Amaziah's father was Joash without any middle position H's. Amaziah was very unwise to insist on war with Jehoash. Second Kings 15 In the twenty-seventh year of the reign of King Jeroboam the second of Israel, Uzziah, son of Amaziah, became king of Judah at the age of sixteen, and he ruled in Jerusalem for fifty-two years. His mother was Jecolia from Jerusalem. Following the example of his father, he did what was pleasing to the Lord. But the pagan places of worship were not destroyed, and the people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. The Lord struck Uzziah with a dreaded skin disease that stayed with him the rest of his life. He lived in a separate house, relieved of all duties, while his son Jotham governed the country. Everything else that Uzziah did is recorded in the history of the kings of Judah. Uzziah died and was buried in the royal burial ground in David's city, and his son Jotham succeeded him as king. In the thirty-eighth year of the reign of King Uzziah of Judah, Zechariah, son of Jeroboam II, became king of Israel, and he ruled in Samaria for six months. He, like his predecessors, sinned against the Lord. He followed the wicked example of King Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who led Israel into sin. Shalom, son of Jabesh, conspired against King Zechariah, assassinated him at Ibleam, and succeeded him as king. Everything else that Zechariah did is recorded in the history of the kings of Israel. So the promise was fulfilled which the Lord had made to King Jehu, Your descendants down to the fourth generation will be kings of Israel. In the thirty-ninth year of the reign of King Uzziah of Judah, Shalom, son of Jabesh, became king of Israel, and he ruled in Samaria for one month. Menahem, son of Gadi, went from Tirzah to Samaria, assassinated Shalom, and succeeded him as king. Everything else that Shalom did, including an account of his conspiracy, is recorded in the history of the kings of Israel. As Menahem was on his way from Tirzah, he completely destroyed the city of Tapua, its inhabitants, and the surrounding territory, because the city did not surrender to him. He even ripped open the bellies of all the pregnant women. In the thirty-ninth year of the reign of King Uzziah of Judah, Menahem, son of Gadi, became king of Israel, and he ruled in Samaria for ten years. He sinned against the Lord, for until the day of his death he followed the wicked example of King Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who led Israel into sin. Tiglath-Pileser, the emperor of Assyria, invaded Israel, and Menahem gave him thirty-eight tons of silver to gain his support in strengthening Menahem's power over the country. Menahem got the money from the rich men of Israel by forcing each one to contribute fifty pieces of silver. So Tiglath-Pileser went back to his own country. Everything else that Menahem did is recorded in the history of the kings of Israel. He died and was buried, and his son Pekahiah succeeded him as king. In the fiftieth year of the reign of King Uzziah of Judah, 
Pekahia, son of Menahem, became king of Israel, and he ruled in Samaria for two years. He sinned against the Lord following the wicked example of King Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who led Israel into sin. An officer of Pekahia's forces, Pekah, son of Remalia, plotted with fifty men from Gilead, assassinated Pekahia in the palace's inner fortress in Samaria, and succeeded him as king. Everything else that Pekahia did is recorded in the history of the kings of Israel. In the fifty-second year of the reign of King Uzziah of Judah, Pekah, son of Remalia, became king of Israel, and he ruled in Samaria for twenty years. He sinned against the Lord, following the wicked example of King Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who led Israel into sin. It was while Pekah was king that Tiglath-Pileser, the emperor of Assyria, captured the cities of Ejon, abel beth Maaka. Jannoah, Kadesh, and Hazor, and the territories of Gilead, Galilee, and Naphtali, and took the people to Assyria as prisoners. In the twentieth year of the reign of Jotham, son of Uzziah, as king of Judah, Hoshea, son of Elah, plotted against King Pekah, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. Everything else that Pekah did is recorded in the history of the kings of Israel. In the second year of the reign of Pekah, son of Ramalia, as king of Israel, Jotham, son of Uzziah, became king of Judah at the age of twenty-five, and he ruled in Jerusalem for sixteen years. His mother was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. Following the example of his father Uzziah, Jotham did what was pleasing to the Lord. But the pagan places of worship were not destroyed, and the people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. It was Jotham who built the north gate of the temple. Everything else that Jotham did is recorded in the history of the kings of Judah. It was while he was king that the Lord first sent King Rezin of Syria and King Pekah of Israel to attack Judah. Jotham died and was buried in the royal tombs in David's city, and his son Ahaz succeeded him as king. Second Kings 16 In the seventeenth year of the reign of Pekah, son of Remaliah, as king of Israel, Ahaz, son of Jotham, became king of Judah at the age of twenty, and he ruled in Jerusalem for sixteen years. He did not follow the good example of his ancestor King David. Instead, he did what was not pleasing to the Lord his God and followed the example of the kings of Israel. He even sacrificed his own son as a burnt offering to idols, imitating the disgusting practice of the people whom the Lord had driven out of the land as the Israelites advanced. At the pagan places of worship, on the hills, and under every shady tree, Ahaz offered sacrifices and burned incense. King Rezin of Syria and King Pekah of Israel attacked Jerusalem and besieged it, but could not defeat Ahaz. At the same time, the king of Edom regained control of the city of Elath and drove out the Judeans who lived there. The Edomites settled in Elath and still live there. Ahaz sent men to Tiglath-Pileser, the emperor of Assyria, with this message. I am your devoted servant. Come and rescue me from the kings of Syria and Israel who are attacking me. Ahaz took the silver and gold from the temple and the palace treasury and sent it as a present to the emperor. Tiglath-Pileser, in answer to Ahaz's plea, marched out with his army against Damascus, captured it, killed King Rezin, and took the people to Kir as prisoners. When King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Emperor Tiglath-Pileser, 
he saw the altar there and sent back to Uriah the priest an exact model of it down to the smallest details. So Uriah built an altar just like it and finished it before Ahaz returned. On his return from Damascus, Ahaz saw that the altar was finished, so he burned animal sacrifices and grain offerings on it and poured a wine offering and the blood of a fellowship offering on it. The bronze altar dedicated to the Lord was between the new altar and the temple, so Ahaz moved it to the north side of his new altar. Then he ordered Uriah, Use this large altar of mine for the morning burnt offerings and the evening grain offerings, for the burnt offerings and the grain offerings of the king and the people, and for the people's wine offerings. Pour on it the blood of all the animals that are sacrificed." but keep the bronze altar for me to use for divination. Uriah did as the king commanded. King Ahaz took part of the bronze carts used in the temple and removed the basins that were on them. He also took the bronze tank from the backs of the twelve bronze bulls and placed it on a stone foundation. And in order to please the Assyrian emperor, Ahaz also removed from the temple the platform for the royal throne and closed up the king's private entrance to the temple. Everything else that King Ahaz did is recorded in the history of the kings of Judah. Ahaz died and was buried in the royal tombs in David's city, and his son Hezekiah succeeded him as king. Now let's turn to Psalm 130. This psalm of ascent is one of the most beautiful of all the psalms and an expression of hope for anyone in despair. Psalm 130 From the depths of my despair I call to you, Lord. Hear my cry, O Lord, listen to my call for help. If you kept a record of our sins, who could escape from being condemned? But you forgive us so that we should stand in awe of you. I wait eagerly for the Lord's help, and in his word I trust. I wait for the Lord more eagerly than sentries wait for the dawn, than sentries wait for the dawn. Israel, trust in the Lord, because his love is constant, and he is always willing to save. He will save his people Israel from all their sins. Now let's open to John 14. In John 13, we heard of Jesus taking the role of a servant and washing the disciples' feet. Judas left the upper room, and Peter was told that he would deny knowing Jesus three times. John 14 Jesus told them, Do not be worried and upset. Believe in God, and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, You will know my Father also, and from now on you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, 
Show us the Father. That's all we need. Jesus answered, For a long time I have been with you all, yet you do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am joined as one with the Father, and the Father is joined to me? The words that I have spoken to all of you do not come from me. The Father who remains joined with me does his own work through me. Believe me when I say that I am joined as one with the Father, and the Father is joined with me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Those who believe in me will do what I do. Yes, they will do even greater things, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in order to bring glory to me, so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything for the sake of my glory, I will do it. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Helper, who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit, who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him, because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him, because he remains with you and is in you. When I go, you will not be left all alone. I will come back to you. In a little while the world will see me no more, but you will see me, and because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am joined as one with my Father, and that you are one with me, just as I am one with you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My Father will love those who love me. I too will love them and reveal myself to them. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are so blessed to have these precious words that you spoke to your disciples on your last night with them. We can see how they were so clueless as you so patiently taught them. And even though we understand some parts better than they could, we still feel clueless. Lord, we blush with Philip. We've been trying to follow you for so long, and we should know you better. Thank you, Lord, for the promise that you are preparing a place for us. We believe you. Thank you for reassuring us by saying, I would not tell you this if it were not so. So we look forward to you coming back and taking us to be with you forever. We praise you that you are for us the way, the truth, and the life. Help us to understand those three things. Move in our hearts today so that we remain in complete unity with you.